What's up everybody? Thanks for joining. Here it is part two of this public land series. In part one, if you haven't watched it yet, you might want to go back and watch it. And it covered the scouting from home basically where we're using aerial photography and we're making some calls and we're using the uh, hunt stand app and so forth. And now in part two here, we're going to be boots on the ground. We're going to talk about reading sign, reading sign of the animals and of other hunters. And public ground strategy and trail cameras and things like that so here goes part two all right once we hit the ground we're going to get some first-hand information about where these deer are feeding and bedding and how they're using the property and then we're going to put together a plan on how to waylay them so the first thing that i like to look for is try to figure out where the deer are feeding what are they eating right now are they leaving the property to feed on crop fields, uh, hay fields, corn stubble, or whatever. Is there acorns and other mass crops that they can eat right there on the property? Try to get a feel for where the deer are feeding, and uh, that's going to help us a lot later on. Even during the rut, the does are on a regular feeding pattern, uh, and the bucks will follow. So feed is probably the most important thing about a deer's daily life and so that's the first thing that we want to figure out now secondly we want to figure out where they're bedding right now and uh, there you probably identified some bedding areas when you were looking at aerial photos and so forth and now we're just going to walk right into those areas and we don't really have any choice but we just got to go see if they're bedding there and that means we got to walk in and see if there's fresh beds droppings, tracks, and sign, and so forth in these bedding areas. And so just uh, reduce your scent with scent killer spray, and that way you're uh, minimizing your human intrusion in these bedding areas. Uh, the, the deer are not just going to bug out. They're, they're going to work their way back in there even if you bump them. So uh, on public land, it's just one of the realities is you just have to go in those bedding areas and check them out. Uh, so pretty early on in the process now as I've figured out where the bedding areas are and where the deer are feeding Then it's time to get up some trail cameras and I want to put those trail cameras on trails between the bedding and feeding I do sometimes put trail cameras uh, cell cameras within the bedding areas themselves and That way I don't have to go back in there to check them if you're if you're hunting the rut then you're going to put cameras on scrapes. It just makes the most sense. Put some fresh scent in those scrapes. Use a scrape dripper. We want to get an inventory of the bucks. We want to know what's available to us, the size of the bucks, the age structure. And, uh, you know, if you get in a tree stand too soon, you don't really know when a buck walks by if it's maybe the best buck you're going to see or if it's one of the smaller ones. So trail cameras are pretty important to me to make sure that I know what the availability of the deer is now we've marked some of these areas on our apps and uh, like the hunt stand app now we're actually going to be continuing to enter things on the app like tree stand locations like bedding areas uh, scrapes and rubs and so forth and then you'll start to see patterns develop as you're putting icons on the maps um, I typically hunt food in the evenings and bedding in the morning, even during the rut. Uh, keep in mind, these does are going to be in a fairly consistent pattern. they got to eat every day, and uh, if you're going to be hunting bucks, the bucks are going to know where the does are. They know where they're bedding. They know where they're feeding. And so we're going to look for pinch points and funnels in between. And uh, when, when the bucks are really cruising, that's uh, a good time to just park your butt in a stand for long hours and we'll be able to identify those spots by our boots on the ground scouting. Another thing that a lot of people don't think of is that you need to uh, scout hunting pressure. You need to know where the other hunters are using and uh, that's going to affect deer movement. It's all also going to affect where you're planning to hunt. So, you know, I've seen game cart tracks where they pulled their stands in and out. Of course, you got footprints and uh, marks on trees that are more subtle when people use climbing stands they mark up the bark um, how many cars are in the parking lot how fresh are the tracks in the parking lot and just kind of get a feel for how many people are hunting the property and where they're hunting and it's it varies in so many areas you know if you go to a lot of the western states north and south dakota nebraska kansas you'll find that you might be the only one using the property or maybe one or two other people 
And I always think if there's another person or two using the property, I've always done this. I try to bump into them and say, hey, you know, let's not trip over each other. Where are you hunting? And I'll just try to avoid you if they were there first and so forth. Just, you know, try to see every other hunter as a potential friend and not an enemy. But uh, you really got to have a handle on where the other people are hunting. And there is a, a myth that you just have to go as deep as you can into a property to get away from the crowds. And sometimes that is the case, but more often than not, you don't have to just go really deep. You just have to figure out where the deer are, and the deer are often using the edges of the property, and they're sometimes bedding in the better bedding cover that's on the public land and leaving the property to feed in crop fields. So keep that all in mind, and uh, you're just going to mix this all in to your information base, and uh, when you get to the property to start hunting, another thing that I want to do is uh, find a place where I can glass and really look things over and try to figure out um, what kind of uh, feeding patterns they're on by personal observation, by actually seeing the deer and so forth. So um, I try not to get in a stand too soon until I have gathered an awful lot of information. That's been super helpful for me. So uh, thanks a lot for listening to this. I hope it helps you kill a deer this year. Thanks for joining me on this short series. Please give me a like on this video. It really helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. We've got lots more good public land deer hunting content coming. And uh, we'll see you next week.